Let's see if I can. Hey, Adrian. Ladies and gentlemen. Robert. Ruth. Shalom. Shalom. Tanya. Hey there. Hola. Nice to see you there. Um, I would love to be streaming from a cruise ship. Um, hey, Cindy. Hi, Maria. Hola. Just do a real quick sound check. Diane, sort of. Hey, Sarah. Hey there. Wander. Hey. Hi, Joan. Nice. Lovely to see you. Paula. Hey, Margaret. Nice to see you. Um, hey, Janet. Nice to see you. I think mom was coming on this one, too. Mom, are you there? Oh, there you are. Vanessa, hola. Hello, Catherine. Smile. This is your son. I'm only a few days away from coming home. Uh, mom, you would love it. It's cooled off now to probably 26 degrees Celsius. Hey, Beverly. Um, and uh, mom, you'll be very glad that I'm all alone because I've had the whole shirt on all day and I haven't been back uh, to my accommodation at all. So I genuinely stink. <laughs> you know, when you smell yourself. Um, and so, there, and therefore, I thought, I thought I would give everyone a real treat and start a tour in a parking lot by garbage. How's that for a, how is that for a big win for everyone? <laughs> but there's two reasons. Um, <laughs> it's like, for, hey, we have Zoom now. We don't want smell on Hago. Um, there are people go-karting behind me. So I knew I was going to come out here this evening, <laughs> but um, I sort of was forced to have no choice. After I finished the last trip I did on a different platform, um, it started just dumping down rain. And I had a little bit of lunch. I hadn't really eaten breakfast, which is typical of me. Um, and, uh, and then I don't know if it's the rain or a problem, but I thought I would come out to where I am here. And uh, it said, the GPS said 25 minutes. And it took me an hour and 20. And there was no giving up. So my option was to either just not do a tour um, but this is kind of where I wanted to come anyway. Yeah, the traffic. So driving in Panama is honestly this the whole way. So where I did the walk the other morning, that Costanera, um, the Costanera goes around the old town. I mean, it's quite fun, but they're all, there's two reasons for it. Uh, anyway, sorry, we're on time. Let me do a quick introduction. For those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Patrick Toomey. It's lovely to have you here. I see a lot of familiar faces. Hopefully there's some new people here too. But it's so nice of you to join me again for another little adventure in, uh, in Panama. So I am out here in Amador. But my name again is Patrick Toomey. I live up in the Canadian Rockies in Banff National Park, literally in Banff. And mom is here who lives in Calgary now, but is a mountain person as well. Um, and, uh, but I came down here because I was, in, I was in beautiful Mexico for several days, of course, and we shared. And thoughts go out. I don't think there's any injuries. Uh, we were talking... Maria told us our friend Ophelia, who came on tour with us in Tule in Mexico, um, there was a, a shake there, uh, not quite an earthquake. Yeah, the, the birds are really competing. Um, but also, I, I had a message that Mexico City had a 6.2 hydro. Thank you. Um, so I don't think there's a lot of damage, but there was, yeah. I mean, there was, we talked so much about earthquakes while we were there. So I've come out to Almador, and I'm actually on the edge of, of Flamingo Island. Now, these are four, although they really look like two on a map, four islands that were built when they built the canal. It's the gravel that was pulled out. They piled it into the ocean here, built it up, and then created a breakwater. Last night's tour, we walked along right down by the Bridge of the Americas. I'm out at the far end of it now. i say I am legitimately in a parking lot, but I'm here in a parking lot for a few reasons. I thought it would be fun just to show you because gradually this area, you know, this area did fall under the American zone, right? So this was a zone area, although up on one of the islands, Noriega actually had his house and it was all looted when he was kicked out of power. But when the canal was handed over in 1999, this area around here then became part of the land of the Panamanian government. So it's pretty neat. And uh, gradually they're developing a peculiar sort of tourism here. And this is why I wanted to start in a parking lot. I mean, I wanted to start for Robert as well here, but so, Oh, sorry, there's my reverse button. Um, sorry, and by the way, everyone, once again, on the new app, I can I can do a Zoom, which is wonderful, but it's kind of freezes the chat up every now and then. So we have these black cackles. 
the bird's making just a racket. But here's another Panama sign, which is kind of fun. Now I'm gonna show you something yucky for a second here, okay, everyone, <laughs> Michelle. So excuse me for showing you something yucky, but this is often the issue with garbage management throughout the world, not just here, but these are all vultures. So none of these are turkey vultures, they're all black-headed vultures, but, and, but it is an interesting scene. I don't really wanna zoom in. I might try just an ever so slight zoom because vultures here and then way, way in the distance, is of course the massive city of Panama. This is the furthest out and the best view back of it. Uh, true birds of prey, exactly, Carol. So when I come and do a tour, uh, anytime actually here with a group, always drive out here. They're not, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of meaning behind that, Anna. Um, but there's also some old naval ships up there. This is Panama Bay. So anyway, I don't want to focus on, um, on vultures, well, the vultures I do, but just the garbage there. But it is interesting to see. However, because we've been talking all about this, hola grima, or namaste. But in the distance behind me, there is a cruise ship out there. That is a NCL, so Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, so there is a cruise ship out in the distance. They dock in here, and it's because we were talking about this earlier. How do people come in, or where do they come from? Hey, Annie. Um, yeah, the vultures are all out there. They are indeed. Um, but there is a cruise ship out there in the distance. And uh, so this is what they very much do. There's the zoom again. Mom, if you haven't been on tours the last little while, uh, we are zooming. You're welcome, Joanne. So that is one of those big cruise ships there. And it's down here. And I'm presuming it's... Um, oh, that's great news, Moira. Uh, yeah, I did a YouTube video there, Ruth, after I finished my earlier tour at the... Um, but these big cruise ships, of course, they'll have parked here and people will be doing their shore excursions to wherever, including, well, cruise people came when I was at the visitor center and then it will undock and it will come around the bend. It is wonderful news they've gotten out. So this ship will actually back out, come around and we'll go over to where the inlet is. So you'll see these, uh, a few nice apartments out here. Hey, Chloe. Um, yeah, I'm glad too. The earthquakes are very common there. So this is Flamingo Island here. They do, Marion. Yep, they do. Now, having said that, that's a great question. I think there's probably some oversized ones that do not, and they would be the ones that would go down the full coast. But you do see cruise ships coming through both ways all the time. For all the many cat lovers on board, there's a nice little bushy cat just sitting there out in the road and cooling off because we're just you know, 5.30, uh, 5.40 in the afternoon. And so the temperature is starting to drop a little bit. It becomes so much more appealing. But I see this. So they have lots of fun activities out here. This is the very, very obvious place to come out and have some fun from the city center. So these islands, um, sorry, oh, I see that chat. I tell you what, just because, just, see, we've gone back to sandals today, right there. So... Hi, Linda. Hi, Tasha. Nice to have you joining in. But uh, I'm feeling it was really a, a fun day out there, but I spent a lot of time going back and forth to get uh, to get into the to the actual visitor center for the locks. And I'm glad that they let me film, but it um, it's an interesting place. Uh, you know, Jay, I've had those sandals, honestly, for 13 or 14 years. They're called Chackles. And they're very popular with climbers because they're heavy underfoot. So they give you a lot of support, but because they're so light on top, they're used for river crossings if you're heading out to climb somewhere. Look at that sky and that sun. You're welcome. Isn't that sky gorgeous? So as I say, there was just a wicked heavy rainstorm. Again, typical kind of tropical thing. Storm's probably the wrong word, but just heavy rain. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't look like rain. Uh, I'm, and I'm not sweating too much, which means the humidity is probably not coming up too much. But oh boy, I was watching it coming down the valley earlier. I had two today. Tomorrow's forecast is better. Now, I only have one Hago trip up tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to put up another one because my goal, thanks, Michelle. Um, my goal is still to try and drive out to Portobello. Now, I may abort that and end up somewhere else on the other side. Um, but I'm just being, but that's, that's sort of what I'd like to do. I think it's a great way to tie off the story from around here. But let's wander around. Um, Everybody's, everybody's a winner. It's uh, what a lovely crowd of people we have, everyone. So lovely to have you. So this is just obviously couldn't be more touristy. 
However, I've never, no, I've never spent much time out here. It's all I'm just driving out for photos and things. But, uh, you know, you have all your, just, this is the kind of the modern infrastructure. Hey, Punkita. Now, this was all, of course, once upon a time, military. These were all set up as military bases in World War II on these islands. Fortunately, never attacked, which is always good news. But already, just to give a sense that I'm on Flamingo Island, it's literally this near. I want to take you over and show you some of the boats in the distance are, um, and the smaller private boats. Now, some I presume are, are locals that own them, but this is the place where you'd sit and queue before it's your turn to go through the canal when the smaller boats are giving a crossing, a clearing. Now, earlier on today, and in that little YouTube video I did, we saw a huge container ship go through the port uh, or go through the, the locks, and then... I actually watched it going out to sea. Unfortunately, it's gone in the distance now. So um, it is wonderful. And aquí al menos la vida bella. So this is, uh, life is beautiful. And so technically we're on Isla Perico, but Flamenco and Naus are really the only ones that you could distinguish between the two. Gosh, I'm tempted to go both ways, but I'm going to come over here just because of the light, and then I'll cross back over to the other side. Um, now, uh, if there are people here who haven't joined me for any of my other Panama tours, I'm happy to climb back into the history of Panama and the canal and so forth. But I thought it might be nice to treat this a little bit more like one of our evening walks in the mountains, one of these nice sort of gentle mountain ones. This is quite fun, by the way. This is a, a restaurant called Beirut. There's one in the center of the city as well, Lebanese food. Um, Nina's in Poland, that's good genius. There's a sign for his Flamenco. So it's lovely that none of this was ever, ever involved in World War II, but the causeway, which is about four kilometers long, and I have jogged it before early in the morning because of course it's flat sea level, um, but uh, is really dead straight, connects these islands and acts as a breakwater for the rare occasion that you actually have a storm through here. Now, the general income Panama is one of the wealthier Latin American countries for sure. Uh, the average Panamanian earns an income of between about 1,200 and 1,500 US dollars a month. Isn't that a lovely picture? But when you imagine that these boats, and I'm, you know, I'm going to make up numbers because I don't know enough about them, but let's say each one is worth at least, I don't know, $800,000. goes to show the disparity of wealth. And Panama does have one of the poor. Gini coefficients, G-I-N-I, I talk about it a lot on some of my history talks, but that's distribution of income and so forth. But this is pure ocean. And that island way out in the distance there is painter Gargan, you know, the French painter, actually was there because he came here during the French attempt to construct the canal and fell ill, presumably with yellow fever, went there to get better. Is there? Um, oh, there is a fin, yeah, of course. Um, oh, you're welcome, Margaret. And they uh, and they made it there, and then um, and then he eventually went through Martinique and made it home. Presumably, he took the train across. Sorry, I just saw a large number of fish jump. So that's lovely, Mario. The other interesting thing, everyone, and I wasn't able to get close enough. But as I was coming up, there is actually out on the point around here. It's closed now, but a, a Smithsonian Research um, Environmental Research Center out there, um, and. There was a huge number. I, like, I would have said cormorants, but I think it was too many birds, all just skinning across the top of the water. Um, I, but I, like if I said a thousand, I wouldn't be exaggerating the number. Ah, oh, that was a black coot, I think. So maybe it was, that's what they were. Um, absolutely, Lynn, hundred percent. So there are so many ships around the world that'll carry like a Panama flag or a Liberia flag. And as I, I actually was talking about that earlier today, that became a real challenge during COVID because a lot of the oh, fish keep jumping. There's obviously something hunting under the water here. Let's just watch it for a minute. Um, but it did actually become a huge challenge for a lot of these big ships because they could not access government money. If you have a flag of convenience, uh, it's not very convenient. Suddenly, if you're a country that's so small, I mean, Panama can't bail out a super tanker. All right. So, I mean, it's an interesting point to make. Now, I am still on the south side of the canal here. And if you've got the map, you can scan out and see exactly where I am. The reflections there are just gorgeous. But I mean, water is always perfect for that anyway. And I saw that on our camper van page, Mark posted a really neat little video about just understanding the canal itself. But basically, you know, the canal takes away where you can take a ship that weighs hundreds of millions of tons 
walk it up some steps, put it through a lake, and then walk it down some steps on the other side. So it's very much that way. Well, Kristen, you know, I like boats a lot too. But of course, we all know the two happiest days in a boat owner's life, the day you buy it, the day you sell it. And our really dear friend, um, Lee, in Amsterdam told me the whole story of the boat that she owned on the canals, but in a public area. And within days, there were squatters in them. And Lee being Lee, of course, just left the note and said, feel free, just take care of it. And, he, and she said at first people did, and then they started not to, and you know started to really wreck it. So that's always a bit of a reality. But I want to come back and cross over again. So there's Isla Naus just in front of me. <laughs> Bring out another thousand, I like that. <laughs> uh, well, it's, but shipping, you know, I did talk about this earlier today, but I meant to talk about it another day as well, is this concept of free on board. So international shipping goes right back to the days of piracy, where the ship owners are not responsible for the goods on board because they simply couldn't pay out if their ship were taken by a, um, by a pirate is, is the original origin of it. But it's actually a factor of international law. Now, I haven't done a lot of law in my life, but I remember when I was doing a graduate degree, I did a course on international law that way. And it was a fascinating thing because we talked so much about it here. Um, just want to once again mention to everyone that I love the fact I have the Zoom feature here, but the chat freezes up. So every now and then I don't see anything. Now, have a look at this little monument here, 2021. This is the celebrating the 200 years of independence from Spain. Um, four kilometers more out here. And so it's a nice causeway, but I've got so many lovely views here. And uh, one of these lovely exercise parks. Oh, what they're making here, by the way, what those bags are, I'll tell you about them. It's immature um, mango. So it's still a little bit cold uh, or a little hard. So then they chill it and they put on lime juice and salt. And in the heat, it is just gorgeous. Um, it really is a very refreshing thing to have. Now, it's still warm as can be out here. I feel as though I need to actually just come out and put my feet in the water for a second because, you know, that's what I have to be done. <laughs> Just to freshen up. And really, it's for everyone else's benefit because I left uh, really quite early this morning and I've been outside for hours in what was, mom will love this, over 30 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity. So, but the other reason I really wanted to come out here is so last night, we wandered along the far end in the distance. And because I have a Zoom, see, I wasn't going to come out here until I tried to Zoom because these are all the best views of Panama. Now, there's a, well, that's a work ship, of course. So why don't we, I'll, I'll move around and get you a better shot. I do have suntan lotion. And I wore long sleeves today, Johan. Um, Ophelia, está aquí todo bien por ahí. Um, but let me just curve around for a second because out in the distance there is modern panama now let me first give it to just like this and then i will give a little bit of zoom as well all right so just everyone have a nice view here now this is how modern the cityscape is now it's not very deep you might notice if i just scan slowly to the left and i'm zoomed in solid different all right you'll see those hills in the back well, those hills, there's a couple of eco lodges up in there. That is tradition, right? This area, excuse my finger, but right through there is exactly where the Camino Real was, where the Royal Road or the Row of Crosses, where the Spanish would move all of their gold across the isthmus. And that was that section. So even though this looks all massive, really, uh, <laughs> well, particularly with the zoom, it makes my finger look really big. Um, but down in the distance, so the newer towers started on the left or the north, and they've just kept growing up in the distance. And I'm just going to try for kicks a scan in here. There, that big twisty tower. I just don't want to take you on a tour of it because the rest of the neighborhood's not worth it. And you see it's got a bit shaky. That's because I'm at a 7.6 time zoom here. But that was the sort of most famous new big building that was the transition. Hey, Trudy of Panama from sort of this small country running its little canal to a modern major banking destination. So I'm gonna back out here. I'm still at a 2.3 times zoom. 
But I always feel when I'm walking, I need to just back out here to virtually zero because then you get a bit of better light. So some of these yachts out here are people who maybe work here and own them or expats, but a lot of them are waiting their turn. It is often larger, Tanya, than people imagine. Um, it's an impressive city. It's about, well, the country's about 4.2 million. Panama City itself is probably over 2 million. And you know what? Panamanians are just so polite. Um, uh, let me show you, Mom. Um, Panamanians are so polite. They're all walking with masks on, so I'm just putting my mask on too, even though we're all outside. So let me just come along a little further here. Oh, that one. Else. So if I just scan in here, so here's taking that zoom. Do you see that bridge? Mom weighing the difference distance there. That's the bridge of the Americas. That is effectively the mouth of the canal. But these islands, it it does mean. But these islands are really what define Panama Bay and the entrance on the Pacific side to the canal. All right, so it's that bridge in the distance. I'll keep walking around. I'll actually I should make it down in the next 10 minutes over to the actual causeway itself. Let me just back out here. So that puts it in some perspective, but it does. It feels to me like Vancouver or like Singapore. Absolutely. Um, we were, we were down the other side and that's why I did want to come out here and say, I'm hoping to go over one way or another to the Caribbean tomorrow. That'll be my final, my final hurrah. Um, Oh, Mary, massive charges. So the big tankers, the, the Panamax is, well, with taxes about half a million dollars and to be transferred directly before entrance into the canal or a bank draft. Um, so massive, it's still hot, uh, massively, massively expensive. However, it comes with pilots and tons of controls. Very, very few accidents over the years. Yeah, small boats, I think you can Google it. You could be as small as $800, I suppose, if you're taking a dinghy through. But that would be if, um, if you know, you're going with a bunch of other ones all in a convoy. There's a uh, truck for sale here, if anyone wants to buy it, by the way. <laughs> I'm connected. But, <laughs> but this whole area through here, this would be my area if I, for some reason, lived here. But um, I did actually hang out and go for lunch in the area that was the traditional zonian area so i'm in the zone here yeah that'd be kind of a stinky one but i'm in the zone here this was the american zone so that's why this area is going through this big transition and what we saw last night um she did i actually answered it ruth probably didn't hear me there you see again where the bridge is just the other side and in fact when we walk along just to the edge of this island then we'll suddenly be arguably in the canal itself but all of this new development that came in along through here. Um, oh, Mary Lou, that's a huge question. Welcome, those who are still joining. I'm out on the Almador Islands, the causeway. Um, uh, you know, Beverly, I think, is here. She's done the cruise this. She came from the Caribbean side. Um, it's, I mean, some ships actually double traverse it as well because there's more entries. There's more cruising in the Caribbean, of course, by definition, than on the Pacific coast, because there's actually simply fewer places to stop along the Pacific. I wouldn't think, and I've never cruised through the canal. I've always been here. I've been here with tour groups at least a dozen, no, not a dozen, 10 times. Um, that's what I'm gonna try and do tomorrow, Moira. Yep, the morning one. I'm gonna try and head out early and head over the other side. Um, I'm not aiming for the canal. The Cologne is, oh, sorry, it's a lot of loud music here. Cologne is not a safe place. That's the main city on the other side. So, but I have, well, ideally I'm going to go and, hey, Renan, hola. Oye, amigo. Hablamos. Everyone, Renan is here from Bolivia. So Renan is right now at his home. Renan is exactly 3,600 meters above me, 3.6 kilometers higher than I am. I am so totally at sea level. And <laughs> it really is a different feel. <laughs> So let's just say, for those who are just joining, un gusto amigo, for those who are just joining, there once again is the mighty city of Panama. Here right now, estoy jugando con el Zoom. And yeah, welcome to sea level. Funny, Kristen, I just don't get tired, um, but I sure do get hot. Um, you know, it doesn't feel different is the honest truth, Helen, but it's that if you go and do, again, the humidity knocks it out of me so much that I do, feel fatigued but you know when you come from a higher altitude 
it lasts for about a month when you go down. I think Renan would agree with that. Um, estoy en Panamá. Estoy efectivamente en Sudamérica porque es el, estoy al lado sur del canal. So, but yeah, when you, those are black words that make such a racket. But let's just, just wander along here for a few minutes. I'd like to come over and show where the actual shipping comes into the canal. Let's see if any big ships are coming out again tonight because that's good fun to see. And we did have a couple of wicked rainstorms. By the way, those of you who joined me last night, we did see the Bio Museum. And when you want to get a sense of how far out this uh, causeway goes, let me just scan in for a second because I can do this. There is um, the Francis Gary Bio Museum open 2014. And that's the mainland there. So between these islands and that is the causeway, right? And the big hill over to the right is the municipal national park. The only one there that is coming to view. The only one that is a national park inside uh, a town or a city in Latin America. So it's a pretty neat thing to see. And I didn't end up there today because I spent so long. Did you, aren't they gorgeous, uh, Chloe? It is. I mean, out here suddenly feels, I mean, you might as well also say you'd be in Fiji or Hawaii or, or those sort of places. And it is a four lane road. So it's quite good construction out here. Um, the origin, of course, the road was the ability to move military things out. Um, yeah, well, Fort Grant, Aaron, is actually, when we look up towards the bridge, that's where it would be. Um, the Bio Museum literally is the biology of the whole canal system in through there. Um, so all of the military installations out on these islands, I'm on, I'm on the, uh, Naos now, but I was on Flamingo. All of the military uh, that was established here for the Second World War has been removed, and then Noriega's house was plundered and removed. I'm having so much fun with the birds. I do just want to curve around for a second. I do want to keep going, so hang on with me, but I just want to come back because this gives you a better view. So there's Flamingo Island. Oh, Marion, 10 hours. 10 hours each way, and so uh, this morning, they can switch it around, but this morning they were coming from the Pacific, going to the Atlantic, and then they come, then it was the other way in the afternoon. That's why I had positioned myself. So, um, yeah. These islands are small, Moira. Um, uh, no, that's the once you get going. It's it's the winding slowly through Gatun Island, or Lake, excuse me, um, Gatun Lake, which is the main... That was what was created. They moved the uh, the original trains from, from 1855 to 1860. Keep in mind the trains even that were across Panama took somewhere between five and 10,000 lives uh, for people building them. Oh, thanks, Diane, yeah. The Bio Museo. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Joanne, is so true. It's, um, now here around Panama City, there really isn't malaria or anything now. I'm not really worried about bugs, um, <clears throat> but absolutely in the jungle. What I tend to do for what it's worth, I will take, like if I go to the Amazon for a few days, I will take malaria pills. I don't like to because they're really hard on the system and you, many of the other ones you have to take for a couple of weeks after you come back. So I tend to go, if I'm just going for a couple of days to a malarial area, A, I don't go in the, the high season, which tends to be the wet season for malaria, and I just don't go. And then otherwise go for the loose long sleeves and the bug spray, as we say, tend to take that sort of opportunity to try and deal with them because obviously preventing getting bitten is the best possible cause. There are, I don't know who doesn't love pelicans in the world, but I certainly do. But let's see if we can do a wildlife zoom right here. These are all pelicans right out there. Pretty gorgeous animals. And I, yeah, I think they're all pelicans. There might be a cormorant sneaking in. Sorry, Kristen. All right, so how are we doing for time? Are we doing okay? Do you think, Lynn, do you think that's true? Oh, thanks, Ron. The joy, yeah, the, I, you know, well, it wasn't that I was resistant to Zoom. I had asked, I think I had been one of the first to ask for a Zoom because of, um, 
because of the fact that I'm out in wildlife all the time. It's just the stability of it. And say, I have had these challenges just like that, for example, where I lost the um, chat. <laughs> but yeah, with the chat, suddenly what I do is zoom in and out and the chat doesn't keep rolling up. I know they're aware of it. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's all technical things to work on. Um, yeah. <laughs> they do. Mozzies and, of course, we had a terrible year for mosquitoes this summer in the Rockies because of the heat wave. Ooh. There's like a... Um, ras, raspados are basically... Um, basically a snow cone, but they put a cream on top of them. Um, so that used to be a treat when we lived in Cusco, that they would have a, a raspado or raspadilla. So I want to carry on up here. As you can see, I'm nearly coming to the end of the island, but I'm really on the causeway. And then we can look across um, and see whether we find uh, maybe a ship or two coming all the way out. And that puts it in some context. Now, those who joined us on the morning trip today, um, is that right, Marion? Well, I could show you my rental car. There's a Suzuki, but yeah, there's money out around here, um, of course. And a lot of the big towers that are in the city center are speculative. Of course, you know, people did learn their lesson under the whole Noriega regime, because when he was removed, essentially the country patriated money, they nationalized the banks. Um, and that was because so much of it was corrupt. So, you know, it's quite a confusing process. Thank you, Bill. Um, but uh, a big speculative, oh, you know, so I keep catching my own eye here. I do want to get over to the other side. But now, Pelican's coming in and the motors are starting up on the big cruise ship. Now, I doubt it's going to be crossing at night. Now, it may have come across already and then parked here for the day. So maybe it's ready to keep going south and... I think it's next. Really, I would just have to go and Google it. I mean, if it's if it's come through and it's going south, then it'll be heading. Well, there's a big port on the Pacific side in Colombia, but it's not considered very safe. So they could be doing two days at sea now and getting down to Ecuador, for example. They call in it Guayaquil or Manta. Um, or it could be curving off and going north, of course, with some calls in along the coast of Costa Rica. So very interesting to see that out there. Um, hey, Gina. Yes, it could well be tiny. Usually uh, all on board by five. And then away they go. Um, certainly, uh, I'm not anti-cruise. I, I, I'm anti, certainly, some of the pollution from cruise ships, which I think everyone is. And also, I really struggle with the treatment of employees. Because, of course, by being in international waters all the time, they don't have a fixed minimum wage. And so, so many of the staff are in rooms of, say, 8 or 12 in bunk beds in the interior working 16-hour days. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it is. But also, um, yeah, as soon as it, that's why all the cruises to Alaska leave from Vancouver or if they leave from Saturday, stop in Victoria, because it immediately thrusts them into the concept of international waters. That's a game changer. I'm sorry, there's a little bit of an unattractive view, but it's a safer place to cross the street here. Um, and... Panamanians, that, for example, is a stop sign that you just saw. Um, so that's sort of a little bit of the flow of traffic. Um, Coronito, yeah, could well be. Um, the port, Coronito is a port, is it? I'm thinking of, I mean, everyone goes to Granada. I'm really, yeah, I'm really not sure how much tourism is going into Nicaragua right now. Say, catching up with my buddy who's here running a tour company, one that I've had a relationship with for years. He's running the Latin American operations, and he said they've actually pulled Nicaragua off their uh, off their their itineraries. And I think that's really, really sad because, um, well, I understand. I mean, Nicaragua really had descended into some problems, but both Granada and Leon, but particularly Granada, is, is one of the most interesting cities in the whole region. So. Um, yeah, Mary Lou, and that's just so true. Really, you know, years ago, I did one through Scandinavia with a group of lovely people. But uh, I remember I was sort of put down in the big, you know, free room. So I shared a 21-day cruise with the priest, who, to be fair, was a lovely, lovely, kind man. And we had beautiful theological discussions every night. But, 
but I've been on the Alaska cruise, um, I don't know, 20 times or something. I've been on a few others. But, uh, but yeah, for people with mobility issues, Latin Americans love cruises too. They often save up, depending on the culture they're in, for their daughter's 15th birthdays. And it cruises often. So, mom, if you're still here, um, oh, by cycling, Jay, cycling and walking. Now, there you go. There is the shipping of the Panama Canal right there. Full speed, whatever that is, 20, 25 knots coming in and out. One ship passing the other, much like all of us in the night. They're heading out the islands that they're seeing way out in the distance are real islands, volcanic islands, whereas what I'm on is all false. And so this is a smaller container ship coming in and that Norient I expect is natural gas or something like that going out there. The sky is lovely. So mom, if you're here, this is actually the mouth now of the Panama Canal. So this is where we can try some pretty fancy zooming down here in the distance. Um, there is a ship coming out under the bridge of the Americas right there. And as I say, I wanted to try and do a YouTube video driving over, um, but I just wasn't going to have a chance that there was such heavy traffic. So when you get to the other side, again, it's fun to say that I'm standing in South America, although I'm standing on reclaimed breakwater here. So just scan back out here. It becomes more stable. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Were you two talking about the ship that got stuck in the canal? Because that was actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Big noise and truck. Yeah, I mentioned that actually earlier today because one of the awful things, and we all know about these um, real fake news, not fake fake news, and all this sort of narcissistic trolling and all these awful things that happened. But when um, when that happened in Suez, it was right after the first woman ever had qualified or been allowed, to see honest truth, to qualify as a pilot. And suddenly social media was blaming it on her. And of course, she wasn't piloting that ship. And of course, it was an incredible effect of, of wind. Um, yeah, no kidding. Look at the peaks. That is a, that is a distinct, extinct volcano. Um, sure. Can you get that there? Do you want me to zoom that in, Tanya? I don't know if that's helpful. Um, a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now here, okay. This is the other thing that I haven't mentioned here yet tonight. This is where the pilots come from. And those two boats going out there now at full speed are going to have pilots on them. Right? So they're the pilot boats. The other one might be a ferry. I might be saying just the one. Uh, yeah, they're the pilots going out, hop on board, and they guide it all the way through. Reina de Pectacular, ¿eh? No tan bonito como tus frutas allá en el lago de Titicaca, pero es algo, amigo. So, there is, um, just up ahead a little ways, there's a little viewpoint. So, nice and quiet. I'll head up to that one. Just as I'm wandering along, I'm sure many of you know the answer to this very interesting question. But Panama hats do not come from Panama. Panama hats, the very light woven hats, and I kind of wish I had one these days, became famous here and associated with Panama when Roosevelt came here wearing one because of the heat. And indeed, Monte Cristi specifically, and I do actually have a, a blog, an article from when I was there, and I even took little Finn there. And that was the birthplace of modern liberalism um, and sort of modern economics in, um, in Ecuador. So it plays this huge role. It's inland of the city of Mant. Look how quick you are, Chloe. There you are. Yeah, but that's the actual town. So Chloe just, oh, did she? You know, I try so often to catch Steffi's tours just because I love Ecuador. I think Steffi's a fantastic guy. Um, and so when I'm traveling, I find it a little bit harder because it's funny. I sign on to so many of Renan's tours because, well, because Renan's a, a fabulous guide, but he also lives in a country that I just love. So I want to show you this light across here just for the sheer beauty of it, everyone. Um, and let me just head down to this viewpoint. Oh, yeah, this path. But yeah, the, 
Tanaha Hats in the secular state, it was just, I mean, it was interesting to go see how they were woven. But the role it played in that society is just fascinating to me, too. Um, hey, Casey. Um, yeah, but it's made famous by Roosevelt here in Panama because of the heat. But that area around Manta, Monte Cristo's inland by about 15 kilometers from Manta, very, very, very hot environment as well. The poor Manta just had a massive earthquake about 10, 12 years ago, and it's really only partly recovered from it. So, um, so earthquakes happen all through, although right here, there's really not many earthquakes. Over in Nicaragua, where the Chinese have bought the rights to build another canal, there are a lot of earthquakes. That's yet another factor about the Chinese proposed canal that would cut into Lake Nicaragua. Some you know, interesting conversation, but, um, but troubling uh, for all sorts of reasons, because it is, of course, a closed freshwater ecosystem as well. Now, the freshwater is used in the middle of this, um, this uh, Lake Gatun, but it's because, of course, during the wet season, it rains so much here that it's actually doable. That gentleman has clearly caught some fish. So this is what this is one of the things you'd want to do in an evening if you lived around here. Uh, I happen to like fish a lot. And of course, this is a ceviche culture as well because it's warm enough and fresh enough. So they're all yummy things. Now let's just come out right here. So now when we look down, a down, there's a whole series of them. They're white fish almost always and shrimp are on all the menus. Um, but yeah, I, I really just have to look up the names of the actual fish. But when you have the fish in the ceviche, it's always the warm water white fish. Um, I would say yesterday I had, I had uh, ceviche, but it was camarones, um, shrimp. Now it just does have a look. I'm going to do a zoom here, Faith, because so there's two ships about to pass right at the, basically the mouth. Isn't that just wonderful? There we go. All right, we're gonna take, isn't that wonderful? We're gonna take bets on whether they bump into each other. I don't think they do. And of course the pilots are, gosh, there's other ones coming out. Um, <laughs> we'll see if it happens. You're in the try actually, I have to go. I can't put it, prop this down too easily now because um, there's so much bird poop on all the pillars. <laughs> I don't really wanna put, yeah, it is 40 ships a day on average. Huh, I was just seeing what was coming out of the water there. Um, yeah, but that's okay because the ecosystem overall is pretty healthy here. Now the camera is just trying to move itself along here. I've got on quite a big zoom. Oh, sorry, I'm just watching some sea life. I, yeah, the birds are dying. There is actually, Marilyn. Um, I've actually been very, very generous in my desire not to show you. I just have a look along the edges here. There's actually litter all the way through. Um, now the city itself is, it's not terrible, but it is here for sure. Um, the city itself is of course very modern and very clean. And I love, of course, all of the, uh, all of the interesting construction and it's generally quite sustainable construction. Sidewalks are terrible. You have to watch your stuff. You don't fall into a hole. Part of that is because you, know, you, you go from individual private businesses building a modern building over to the municipality not kind of living up to its responsibility so you know and that all is tied to taxation all sorts of different reasons which is understandable um it'll be from the ships but it's all honestly now i remember a friend who uh whose parents i think have a salmon license in bc but they would go beachcombing just for the fun of it you know so there's some of the garbage but um but they would go beachcombing and after that tsunami in Japan, of course, half of what they're finding was um, was refuse from Japan. Right? I mean, these massive, massive currents around the world. So, oh no, there's a, a I, I think, um, did you, Cindy, good for you. Um, really, truly good for you. I do think, you know, it's one thing to clean up and bury it all, which is something. Uh, all of the news about microplastics in our water is legitimate. I mean, a really legitimate concern in the world. And so it's a worthwhile conversation, of course, at all levels about um, about management of of our environment. So, you know, as a major shipping part of the world here, 
course, there's going to be some pollution. Now, of course, it can be dissipated in the mighty Pacific Ocean. I'd say a little less so in the Caribbean because the Caribbean is both shallower and uh, and there's a lot of population there. Up here on the Pacific Coast, the populations are are smaller. Well, and that big island, Helen, is just remarkable to talk about, isn't it? And really remarkable to talk about. Um, I, if people don't know what Helen's referencing there, there's this huge floating plastic conglomerate in sort of central north Pacific Ocean. And I remember quite recently reading a news article about the ecosystem that's happening inside of it. So, um, you know, genuine life. So maybe that's a good thing um, in its own way. So now I have blown past my time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I do want to have a look here. Give you one more zoom into the Bridge of the Americas. I am glad that I came out here tonight. Uh, so I've only got one more Hago on tomorrow. Um, I decided not to put on a later one because I'm going to go do some exploring and say so yeah, I'm either going to go out to the Caribbean side or ideally make it to Portobello, but I want to see what the road conditions are like. The weather looks like it won't be as rainy tomorrow. Um, and then I'm going to have an evening one in the old town on a different platform. Um, but I do, oh, see, that's where, thanks everyone, where the uh, chat unfortunately froze up on me. Um, it's, I do want to say, obviously, a warm thank you for all your support. Of course, I'm happy to, to come back here, but I did very intentionally come down here thinking I could do tours and see how best um, I could come close, at least, to, to financing a trip, because it's a long-term test of sustainability. Um, I do hope as well, ideally, if we could have done this as a series, would have been a nice way. Look at this pelican just coming across here. Isn't that gorgeous? Fabulous birds. And look at that sun set. Now that sun is setting. Oh, that's a funny angle yet. Well, it's, yeah. it's because when you come out of the canal, you're actually coming out southeast. So it's a, a peculiar little form, even though you're on the Pacific side, which is the west side. So, uh, yeah, isn't that lovely? Sorry, it's... Um, so I tell you what, I'm not going to do any more Zoom. Um, reflections are beautiful, aren't they? I look forward to your postcards, but I'm not going to do any more Zoom because um, the chat just freezes up. But uh, I will say do, do a trip tomorrow morning. But please tell me if you have or ask me if you have any questions or anything just about the last few days in Panama, all the different things we've seen. I don't pretend to have all the answers, of course, but hopefully you gather that I didn't just come here as someone with no no background on it at all. Um, I love the sort of homework that I put into it as well. It's fun to, to pull off a road trip. And, well, this is a true road trip. I still haven't crossed any of the bridges, so I still haven't been to the other side on this trip. As the traffic's been quite heavy around here, I've um, I've been a little bit, uh, a little bit, no, I'm not disappointed, but just I've just found time tighter than I thought I was going to. Would probably be the only thing, but but yeah, it's a fascinating place. And I think this kind of heat. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. You go from east to west. Again, I am on technically the west side. It's just southeast where the canal comes out. Right? I'm on the Pacific Ocean. It takes me about an hour to drive over to Cologne, which is the other side. And it's a good highway. Um, there are tolls here, so you can do all of that. Um, oh, you're welcome. And well, Chloe, my goal tomorrow, thanks, Marilyn. My goal will be uh, will be to get to Portobello, but I that, it's a very poor road, and I'm just going to see what the safety conditions are like on that road. Um, well, that's right, Casey. I mean, Casey, I think you would like it because I know you like warm. Um, so I think there are some interesting conversations about that. But uh, yeah, there, there's a lot to talk about. But it is it, the other thing about Panama specifically is because it's the crossroads of the world. Um, it's uh, because of its sort of status as that. It has the big international airport. It has its own fairly successful airline, Copa. And it's an access point for both going to Costa Rica one way, Colombia or South America the other. <coughs> half the people on my flight the other day, um, yeah, half, sure, Lynn, half the people on my flight the other day, more than half were just literally passing through on their way up to places like Ecuador. That's, um, oh, you're welcome, everyone. So lots of love 
if you I haven't uh, very intensely not been um, yes Michelle I haven't been looking at um, reviews or anything like that but if you wouldn't mind to putting up loads of good ones that would be lovely and yeah I look so forward to the talks thanks Judith well thank you everyone for your for your friendship and your support and for obviously joining us out here um, and as always, look, I'm a bit sweaty still. <laughs> I sort of feel like when I see the camera with this light, it makes me look wrinkly, but I'm not. And the gray, it's taken me years to put that in. So I want to say peace. No, Finn isn't with me. He flew home from Mexico. By the way, I am going up on Saturday. Um, <laughs> I'm little Beverly. I think everyone will enjoy my share. Going up to Mexico City. I really think I'll stay out by the airport for two nights and maybe just go in and I'll do one tour in the Socolo. But I'm very, I am a little more safety conscious in the big city. It's just because I don't have anyone with here. I'm fine walking around alone, but there I'm not. And so therefore I just want to be a little careful. Um, yeah, there are expats here. Um, very different. Uh, um, different sort of culture with some of the expats. Some of the ones actually go live up in these hills in the distance up there because they get a bit higher up. Hey, Joel, they get a bit higher up. And so the weather's a bit, a bit better. Well, a bit cooler. It's a matter of personal taste, I guess. There we are. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Catherine. Um, oh, thanks, Helen. And uh, and warm, warm thoughts to all of our friends and colleagues, of course, in Ukraine and around the world. And goodness me, it would be awfully lovely if we would move to a world without conflict. But I guess that's maybe a little too hopeful for some of us. But uh, give peace a chance, as they say. So I will just leave everyone with some lovely light here and say a very warm and loving good night from the Pacific Ocean and the Panama Canal. I'm just going to interrupt myself one more time and just say all of those ships out in the distance are waiting for their turn to go through. So at night when it's dark, it actually looks a lot like a big causeway, but it isn't. It's actually ships sitting there. Sorry, I interrupted my quiet moment.